Keurigs are evil. Instant coffee is evil. And if you use either of these things, you are in luck. Because today I'm going to show you how to make actually good coffee in the confines of your dormer. Some things you'll definitely need. High quality coffee. I'll link my favorite choices in the description. I suggest investing in a hand burr grinder or an electric grinder to keep things fresh, but for most people pre-ground would be the more convenient option. An electric tea kettle. I'm aware that many colleges don't allow electric kettles, so if you have a microwave and a measuring cup, that would work just as well. If you have a Keurig line around, you can use this to get your hot water as well. Still, some kettle designs are allowed while others aren't, so ask around to see what your options are. Lastly, your preferred brewing equipment. I'll be going over my top three in this video. The V60 pour over, AeroPress, and the French press for brewing multiple cups at a time. It's also delicious. Let's start with the French press. The general rule of thumb for ratio is gonna be one to 15 coffee and water, or about three tablespoons of coffee for every cup of water. An investment I highly recommend for each of these methods is a simple scale. The one I got is a bit pricey, but any cheap kitchen scale will do the trick. Once you have your coffee measured out, add your water directly to the grounds, then stir gently. Put the lid on and let it sit for about two minutes before pressing down the filter, and it's ready to go. The big drawback to this option is the cleanup. Since you probably don't have access to a disposal in your dorm, it can be a pain to get all of the grounds out of the press to clean it. That's something to keep in mind. Next up is the AeroPress. This is easily the most complicated process for our three options, but it can be prepared in a number of different ways. This can allow you to make a basic cup of coffee in Americano or a straight espresso-like shot. For a basic cup, add one AeroPress scoop of coffee, or about 1.5 tablespoons, and add water to the number four line, which is about 220 grams of water. Stir gently and then place the plunger in the chamber, pulling up slightly to create a pressure seal. Don't press it down yet. After about a minute, remove the plunger and stir again. Then plunge until you hear the hissing sound and you're done. The AeroPress is super easy to clean. Just twist off the cap and press down all the way over the trash can. Then run some water over the exposed plunger and dry it off. It's not thorough, but it's good enough for a lazy college student. Lastly, my personal favorite, the V60. This is by far the easiest option and the most meditative in my opinion. If you don't have a gooseneck kettle, you'll want a gooseneck pitcher for this. Link in the description for a matte black one, because hello. Start by adding your filter, being sure to rinse it with your hot water before adding the coffee. Pour overs are great at pulling the flavor out of, out of the coffee, so this method will bring a lot of paper taste out of the filter if you don't rinse it beforehand. Sift the paper water in the mug and you'll see what I mean. Now you're ready to add your coffee, about 20 grams if you're using the scale, making a small divot in the center. And be sure to smooth out the surface first to keep the flow rate consistent. When you're ready to add the water, start by pouring a bit in the divot and moving in a circle until the uh, bubbles start to rise. Letting this die down is called blooming and it helps to remove the excess CO2 from the coffee. After the bloom is finished, keep adding water in this circular motion until you've added 250 grams of water, again if you're using a scale. Once it's done brewing, just drop the filter in the trash can and rinse the V60. Just like that, cleanup is finished and you can enjoy your coffee. And I have included links to all of the things that I use for this in the description. I am signed up uh, with Amazon Affiliates, so if you ever use any of those links, I will get a small kickback from that, which would be a huge help. Uh, so I'll have a couple different options, the different things you can use, the different price points. Pick whatever's best. Anywho, that is how I make actually good coffee in the confines of my dorm room. Takes a while, but that's half the fun. Anyway, that's it. Just sharing my barista-ness. Okay, cool. Bye.